flip over the, from 12 to 15. May God have a blessing to the readers and maybe the children of his word. The thing we do in life is only here to his word only. And, and let us stay steady, pray it up, and stay with it. Amen. 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 Amen.
going on hear and read a few words of God before you hear this great male chorus. Our response to reading is coming from uh, Ecclesiastes 3. One through eight. Ecclesiastes three, one through eight. Alright. I'll be reading today from the uh, ESV version and whatever version that you have, uh, I'm sure we'll be close to each other. When you have it, say amen. amen. season and time for every purpose on the Thank you. 
You see, God doesn't operate on our time, and waiting is even harder when we are under pressure. And I just believe that there may be someone in the house of the Lord right now, or watching on the live stream, you are under pressure. Pressure is when you have lost your job, and companies are thinking about, or thinking about creative reasons not to hire you. Pressure when your needs are more than your haves. Pressure when your prayers seem to go unanswered and you have no one else to turn to. Pressure when you have reached the point of giving up. And during these times, Satan wants us to feel like God has left us alone. Now, Satan wants to feed you and I seeds of doubt. He wants to feed us seeds of defeat. He wants to feed us seeds of despair. Because he knows that a defeated Christian cannot produce the right fruit. Yeah. Now we need the right things, brothers and sisters. We need some positive things, some uplifting things to occupy our minds while we are waiting on the Lord. Yeah. As we examine the background for this passage of scripture on today, Isaiah prophesies to a spiritually decaying nation that was divided into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom was Israel. And the southern kingdom was called Judah. Yeah. But back in the book of Exodus, God's people entered into a covenant relationship with him back at Mount Sinai. Yeah. But this relationship had some conditions. God told them that if they obeyed his commandments, he would bless them and protect them from their enemies. Yeah. But if they turned away from him, all right. he would no longer protect them and would bring all types of curses upon the people. Yeah. And over time, the people who would turn away from God and God adopted and put some pressure on them and they began to practice many pagan things from other pagan nations surrounding them. Now, at the time of this ministry, the northern kingdom Israel had already been taken into captivity by the Assyrians. So Isaiah prophesied to warn Judah of the judgment that was soon to come because of their disobedience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the uniqueness of Isaiah is that he wrote about the events that were yet to occur as if they had already happened. Oh, yeah. Now the book of Isaiah chapter 40 provides words of encouragement to those in despair and feeling as if you have no hope right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you don't mind, Brady, man, I would like to take a few more minutes to tell you about a few things that we need to remember while we are waiting. In verse 1, if you see verse 1 in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, Isaiah is charged to comfort the people of God. He is to comfort them with the good news that in his own thing, God will bring his people with a mighty stretched hand. As you read through chapter 40, you will discover that there are illusions here to the ultimate deliverance God will provide in the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. In verses 27 and 31 of our text today, there is still a dilemma. What are they to do in the meantime? How are they to make it in the meantime? God will deliver. The Messiah is coming. But that's a long way from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What are these weak, worn out, and weary people to do in the meantime? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, primarily consists of future deliverance. The closing verses focus on the promise for the meantime. Ready, man? Remember, God works while we wait. One writer said there's actually something happening while nothing is happening. God uses waiting to change us. In verse 27, Isaiah presents a question to God's people. He's presenting a question to us today who are anchored in a household of faith. Why do you feel that God doesn't know what you're going through? But that he doesn't care about your struggle? Look at verse 25, greedy man. God talks about his uniqueness. There's none like him, and he has no equal. Moving down to verse 26, it talks about God's greatness, his awesome power and might. And if we're going to wait on somebody, we need to be sure that it's someone with the ability to come through. While you're waiting, you must remember that God knows where you are, is my first point. God knows where you are. Now, the people who feel that God had abandoned them and no longer care about their struggles. Though they would be in captivity for 70 years, they are still God's people. Yeah. He loved them just as much as he did before he allowed them to be put in bondage under the Babylonians. Yeah. God was just being true to his word. 
And you got to remember, whatever God says is going to take place. And if we're not careful, great Emmanuel, Satan would have us feeling the same way. Feeling like we have no hope. Believing that God doesn't care about our current situation. He would have us feeling abandoned, alone, and defeated. Just because we may be going through something right now that we cause ourselves or that God has allowed, it doesn't mean that he has turned his back on us. Yeah. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love us. Yeah. Because God has no equal. God is awesome and no one can match his awesome might. God is the creator of all things. God sees all and knows all. He sees our highest and he sees our lowest points, my brothers and sisters. God knows where you are. We just have to learn to be patient. We just have to learn to wait on him. Now we're honest about this. We worry from time to time. We get anxious every now and then and wrestle with honest feelings that God has somehow abandoned me. Have you ever felt that way? You feel like God was playing high and go see with you. You feel like God is hiding. You feel like God doesn't want to talk to you. It reminds you in your head that God has abandoned me. See, when God tells us to wait, we don't always trust him. But go ahead and find ways to accomplish what we want to happen in our lives. See, pushing God to the side goes against his plan for us. It creates distance in our relationship with him. Just like God's chosen people, we complain and keep saying from time to time that God has left me. Truth of the matter is, God doesn't leave us. We leave him. See, this wasn't a one-time thought of God's people. This had became a continual pattern, great right, man. In the verse 27, Isaiah mentions Jacob and Israel. He's reminding them that they're not the first to wrestle with God's timing. Jacob wrestled with God in the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 26 to 28, and he called Jacob Israel because he wrestled with God. Now today, God wants us to learn how to follow him and put down I demand themselves to calm that screaming child that's still inside many of us. We don't start out willing to wait. Our natural response to waiting is often anger or doubt. One way God helps us do this is to say, wait. That miserable, uncomfortable, sometimes faint, stainful, painful state of silence is one of God's most powerful tools to set you and I free. If you really want to be set free from something, wait on God. If you really want God to remove something out of your life, wait on God. If you really want God to elevate you and bless your kids and your grandkids, wait on God. If you're really waiting for that job promotion, wait on God. But while waiting, we must remember that God knows where you are. We must also remember that God has no limits, is my second point. Verse 28 in the NIV says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can comprehend. The context of this verse, great man, was saying that while you are in despair and doubting God, do you not know? Meaning, have you not experienced God for yourself? Have you not heard? It's been said through generations. Been passed down through years. Maybe someone still isn't following what I'm saying. Maybe you, you still not feeling this passage of scripture. So let's say this a different way. Today we would ask, have you tried God for yourself? We would say, I tried him, and I know all about him. It's been passed down to generations because mama told me that he's a rock in a weary land. Big mama told me he is my leaning post. Papa said he's my burning barrier and my heavy load shell. He is the everlasting God, the one who has no limits. He has no beginning and he has no end. He always has been and always will be. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. See, he has no boundaries. There's no play that's off limits to him. He can reach you wherever you are. He does not faint or get weary. He cannot overstand himself and get physically exhausted, nor does he ever get tired and need to take a break. He can carry your load, my load, at the same time. So when you're going through difficult situations while you're waiting, we must remember that God has no limits. And because he has no limits, we are never too low for God to pick us up, and we're never too far away for him to bring us back home. There's no failure in God, my brothers and sisters. 
I heard a preacher say, really bless my spirit. He said, just have faith and believe. Many blessings you will receive. He will be there when you call and catch you when you fall. While waiting, remember that you are waiting on someone that made the heavens and the earth. Someone that is sovereign and has no boss that he has to answer to. You're waiting on someone that cannot and will not fail you. Just wait on the Lord. Sometimes we need to relearn what we already know. We don't need new information, my brothers and sisters. This is one of the reasons why we need to hear God's word every Sunday at Sunday school. This is the reason why we need to hear God's word at 10 a.m. worship service. This is the reason why we need to hear God's word at Bible study. Not because we need new information, but because we so quickly forget what we already know. In verse 29, it tells us, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. The essence of this verse is God gives power or strength to the weak or the weary. And to them that have no might or ability, he increases their strength. See, now strength in this verse is translated to power. This verse is talking about our natural abilities. Yeah. And that leads me to my third point. Yeah. While waiting, remember, God will give you what you need. Amen. Judah will be a people in captivity, Amen. exiled to a foreign land and forced to serve a foreign people. Amen. Many will fall into despair and will faint or give up. Others will grow weary, turn away from God and give in to pagan lifestyle. Amen. But Isaiah was telling them that when you reach the point of giving up, just hold on because God will give them what they need. Yeah. Which was the power to keep on going. Yeah. And there is no power like God's power. God's power doesn't cost any money. So dynamic, but yet it is free. God's power is available anytime you need it. You don't have to worry about blackouts or the weather, not to this power offline. God's power is universal. You don't need anything special to make it work for your situation. It works wherever you are. You just need to have a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. See, God is infinite. But we are finite creatures. There's a limit to what we can do. See, your limit may be different from my limit. So when you have come to the limit of your own strength, you feel that you can't take it anymore. Dr. Vernon Baines once said, tie a knot in your rope and hold on to your hope. Keep the faith. You can just wait on the Lord. God will come to your rescue. God will give you what you need. Somebody has been without a job. Bills were high. The money was low. But you held on to your rule. You waited on the Lord and he gave you more than a job. He blessed you with a career. Somebody has been sick. Doctors had wrote you off. Said they could do all they could do. But you held on to your rule. You waited on the Lord and you restored your health. Yeah. So while waiting, we must remember that when our mental, physical, physical, emotional, or spiritual tension on empathy, yeah. wait on the Lord. Yeah. And God will give us what we need to go a little further. Yeah. But if there's anyone thinking that they can handle whatever life's in their way, if you're feeling that it's taking God too long to move, and you can't depend on your own ability, yeah. well, if you feel this way, Verse 30 is for you. For the New American Standard Bible translation says, Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble back. This verse isn't talking about physical exhaustion, but it's talking about mental, emotional, and spiritual exhaustion due to the hardness of life. Isaiah was telling the people that their time of captivity will be so hard that even the youth, those in the prime of their life, even the young men with special skills and abilities, in other words, those who normally live life carefree, insulated from the fairs of the world, even they will fall into this world. Yeah. I need to Paul to tell somebody right now that no matter how strong, no matter how smart, no matter how good looking or connected that you think you are, you need the Lord. Yeah. See, people walk around acting like little G's, walk around acting like little gods, Thinking that they have the answer to no one and that they have everything under control. I need to tell you that life will put some things on you that you can't handle. I have seen it happen too many times. See, life has a way of humbling people. Life has a way of bringing pride for folks to their knees. But in contrast, 
to those that depend on their own strength. Yeah. I like how chapter 40 ends in verse 31. It's a very popular verse. And if you have been through a few storms in your life, you can relate to what I said or it's singing. Yeah. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. Yeah. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah. And I leave you with my last point. The benefits of waiting yeah. on the Lord. See, but they that wait upon the Lord, those that put their hope and their trust in Him. And you can't wait on someone that you don't trust. If I had a 3 p.m. flight today, I needed someone from Ray Emanuel to take me to the airport. I'm not going to wait on the person to pick me up that I know is their own time. I can't trust them to do what I need them to do. And when I wait on the Lord, one of the benefits is that you will find out that He is always on time. Shall renew our strength. And he who means to renew means to pass or go by. You have gone no further. Another benefit to waiting on the Lord is that he will give you the power to go beyond your limitations. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall rise up, go up as eagles. Eagles don't hang around on the ground. They fly and be a mess in the sky. That tells me that they may be going through some tough times in their life too. But you don't have to act like a groundhog. Yeah. Go on the ground where people never see you. Show up from time to time hoping your problems will just go away. Yeah. Another benefit to waiting on the Lord is that God will give you the strength to rise above your situation. Yeah. See, you don't have to compromise your character, y'all. Yeah. You don't have to act all lonely and defeated. Yeah. You don't have to spend your time with people and at places that make you uncomfortable. Yeah. If you just wait on the Lord, you can rise like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. Yeah. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah. For the word running refers to those exceptional demands of life. Yeah. Those things that test the limits of faith. Yeah. I want to refer to the daily grind that we all have to endure. Yeah. Another benefit to waiting on the Lord is that he will keep you from folding or giving up under pressure of life. Yeah. But before I take my seat, there's a story told. By a man who was struggling with many issues and reached the point of giving up. Amen. He tried everything, Amen. talked to everybody, but his situation would never change. Yeah. So one night he prayed, What do I need to do for my situation to change? Yeah. Yeah. That night God showed him a dream of a little boy trying to fly a kite. Yeah. Right. The little boy would run until his kite would rise a little. But the moment the boy stopped running, the kite would fall back to the ground. The boy kept on trying, but he could not get his kite to fly. Finally, the boy got tired and gave up. He went home and came back the next day. This time, he did not have to run to get the kite to take off. All he, was, all he did was let the string out and the kite begin to fly. So God asked the man, why was this boy able to fly his kite this time? The man answered and said, it's simple. The boy just waited for the wind. Yeah. The Lord responded and said, my son, you have been acting just like this boy. Yeah. You're trying to make things happen your way, and now come to me all exhausted and tired, frustrated. Well, all you had to do was just wait on the wind. So you may be going through something right now in your life. Don't burn yourself out trying to fix it on your own. Just wait on the Lord. The Holy Spirit moves like the wind in all kinds of directions. Wait on the Lord and he will come see about you. God cares about your struggles. But how do I know God cares? Because while we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. I tell you, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I tell y'all, you need to remember by waiting what happened on the hill called Calvary. I tell you, it was at Calvary that blessed him. My soul. When I get down, I think about Calvary and it lifts up my spirit. When I know people are going against me, I think about what they did to Jesus at Calvary. Y'all know what happened at Calvary? They stretched it wide, they hung him high. At Calvary, they took him down, put him in dope for Mother Bear's tomb. It didn't look good for us on Friday night, y'all. It still didn't look good for us Saturday morning. It still didn't look good Saturday at noon. But something happened between Saturday night and early Sunday morning. I tell you, he got up with all power in his hand. Why don't you wait on the Lord? Just give Jesus a try and keep on pursuing and trusting. The Lord bless you. Keep it, my boy.
Let him call, say amen. Amen. Sister Pam. Reverend Robinson and church members and the other ministers on the roster. This morning we have Sister Hunter who's coming for a testimony and prayer. And we also have Brother Ricky Evans coming for prayer. Amen. Bless you, bless you. Let us hear from Sister Hunter. Praise God. And to the saints, the guests, and the members. I'm Sister Hunter. I'm not a stranger to Brady Man. This is my home church. But I know it's a lot of you think you know me, but you don't. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the anointing of God's word and the oil. I believe there's nothing that God cannot do. And I believe that I can do all things through Christ Jesus. So I'm here for a testimony, and um, a lot of you don't even know, and that's okay because I didn't tell no one. I have a brother who has been in the VA hospital for over two months. And it was during the time when the pastor that we now have was going through his, uh, being, you know, nominated for the church and it just seemed like some things is just out of order. Right. But I know prayer is always in order. Yeah. Right. So I didn't bother the church and I didn't bother anyone else about <coughs> what I was going through because I was just praying because I knew God could take care of me. But I'm so thankful today that I could come in the church and we have a pastor that's standing at the podium. Amen. Some say, is Sister Hannah leaving the church? No, Sister Hannah didn't leave the church. <laughs> Sister Hannah was still at the church. Amen. So I guess you better ease your mind. But and I, I'm so thankful today, and I think we all should give thanks to uh, the ones who kept the church going. You know, I, I've heard so many things. <laughs>
if you would just lay your hands on him. Amen. On him. In my house, you have to serve the Lord. I can't help you in my house if you don't serve the Lord. Because I'm not in the streets. And I can't bring street into my house. So I know I got to do something. So I'm asking God to take over the situation, to heal him, to take anything out of his life, his body, that is not fit for Christ, so I can continue to help and not take my hands off. Amen. Now that is why I'm here this morning. And uh, I thank God for what he's doing in my life. Amen. I thank God for giving me the power of prayer, that I can pray and my prayer is answered. Amen. I thank God for all of those things that I don't have to be biased. So I'm real thankful for that. Now, Pastor Arjun, there was a touching, touching message for this morning.
But Lord, we ask you right now, Father, to put the right people in his life, Father. Anybody or any group of people, Lord, that's trying to pull them in the wrong direction, we ask you to rebuke them and remove them out of his way, Father. But Lord God, give him the strength, Father. Lord, transform his mind right now, Lord God. Renew his mind, Father, Lord, to, Lord God, to say no, Father. And just let him know, Father, Lord, that he's not weak, Father. Lord, because, Lord, there's no weakness in meekness, Father. And Lord, we ask you to help him right now, Father. Lord, put your hands of protection around him right now, Father. And then, Lord God, we thank you right now, Father. For we claim this all right now. In the powerful, most precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all of our hearts come together and say amen. amen. And thank God.
for filling in for me. She's on the announcement for today, but I texted her earlier this week and told her, I was feeling pretty good, so I'm coming to church. Oh, yeah. I want to thank all the teachers who taught Sunday school back in the classroom this morning. Ministry. 
Reverend Robinson would like to meet with the men's ministry leaders next Sunday, July 16th, after morning service. Amen. 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 We have a thank you card. The Peterson family would like to take the time to thank you for celebrating the wonderful life of Fillmore Peterson III. The love, support, thoughts, and prayers are truly appreciated during this time. Please continue to keep our family lifted up in your prayers. Sincerely, the Peterson family. Amen. Today, we have a christening. Please stay for a few minutes at the end of service to help us welcome Caleb Williams into Christ's family through christening. He is the son of Joy Williams, the grandson of Cheryl Williams and Quan Williams, the great-grandson of Sister Joyce Williams, and the brother of Jax Williams. On this day, we place our child in Christ's care forever. These have been your morning or weekly announcements. I'm Sister Katrina Lewis Morgan. Please have a wonderful week.
I will give the Lord a round of applause for what I was just taking place the fall. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to go to the bottom and shout with Reach there back to church with my mother's mother out on the game yard. But I would spend time with my other grandmother, my father's mother, the late Kate Jackson. She was a member here at the church. And whenever someone, someone would be baptized or someone joined the church, or there's a baby dedication, you all can stand for a minute. You all would always say, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I Oh, uh -huh. 